Hey everyone, it's Pat here. I just thought it may be fun today to actually open up one of the toys that's sitting behind me that I've wanted to open for a while and I just didn't have time and it looked so nice in the box on the shelf, but I'll be able to put it back in the box. So let's go ahead and open it up. This is the... This is an exclusive, actually. It was released to Toys R Us in Japan in the year 2000. It is the Microman Microbikes set. And the two characters in here are named Hyper Speeder and Tornado Bison. Earlier in the same year, in 2000, they'd actually been released individually as the characters Mock Speeder and Road Bison in uh, what I'm guessing are much more subdued colors, but still probably cool. I don't have those individual figures. But I do have the earlier figure that they were based on. These are the Generation 2 Transformers Laser Cycles, Road Rocket and Road Pig from 1995. Now, I think that these are of particular interest to people who may watch our show because of the fact that Transformers that are compatible with 118 scale action figures, that's, you know, roughly three and three quarter inch action figure, those are often the topic of conversation because it's just kind of cool to think of some Transformers that may be able to run around with your G.I. Joes or other figures that are roughly that size. So I thought that these may be fun to take a look at, so let me open it up. Oh, wow. Uh, these are interesting because they're actually like a metallic, clear color, which is fairly cool. Uh, and they do come with their riders. These are Microman figures from that era. They're actually a little bit shorter than what you see on some other Microman figures. Uh, they're for a, a lot of us are very familiar with Micronauts, who may actually be fans of G.I. Joe. This line of Microman figures from the early 2000s is actually considerably shorter than those. So the way that they are going to look on the bikes may be a little bit better or a little a little not as well scaled. You can decide on that for yourself. I'll insert some pictures in here after I finally get these out and, and get some some comparison shots for you. Uh, but that's not actually that abnormal for Microman because I was kind of surprised when I f first got some Microman Hoodman figures that the Microman Hoodman figures were also a different scale. So it seems like even in the vintage run of Microman, things were changing here and there just a little bit. So, uh, not a horrible thing that these are considerably smaller. This series was the LED series, which anybody who has the original Generation 2 laser cycles may be aware that the laser series, you know, there was the, the laser rods and there was Laser Optimus Prime, and the feature there really was internal LEDs that would cause them to light up. Uh, I unfortunately don't have batteries in this one. And uh, from what I understand, from reading about these prior to buying them, they actually, yeah, they did. They actually removed the LEDs for these, which is a little bit curious because this toy line was part of the Microman LED series. But I think that the reason for that is that the figures themselves, the Microman figures, their backpacks actually have in them some LEDs, and so that sort of makes up for it. Oh, and I see one of my favorite things. There's magnets in the feet of these figures. I wonder if these LEDs are actually going to work. Yeah, on the backs of the figure there's a metal connection and then a metal connection in the backpack, so I like that. Let's see, maybe that actually will have kept these batteries nice and good. Oh yeah! Yeah! Whoever made the batteries did a very good job. They didn't corrode everything, thank goodness. And these figures, they do sit, I think he sits nicely on the motorcycle, but I'm going to guess that once I get a G.I. Joe figure on here, it's probably going to be even a little bit better. Might as well test the other one, too. Let's see if we're two for two, or if uh, that that would have been Hyper Speeder. This is Tornado Bison. Let's see if Tornado Bison's backpack is as lucky. Try 
Drum roll, and... Ah. Uh, nope, no luck this time. That's okay. I think I can forgive them of, of the battery going bad over 20 years. Uh, one of the things that's interesting, though, is that whenever they made these, they actually did retool the bikes. I think maybe I mentioned that. And here's, here's where the retooling is. If you look on this Transformers Generation 2 bike, you can see the clutch and brake there on the... right there by the handlebars. Whereas these handlebars have been changed, so the, the diameter of them fits nicely in their hand, and they don't have to worry about fitting their hand around that handlebar because it's just a straight peg. Okay, and in 2002, these were re-released again. The molds were reused once more as a Walmart exclusive two-pack, and they were renamed Sideways and Axer. And then later on, these were 2002, later on in 2004, they were used for what I believe, I guess, would be the last time or the most recent time. We can't say that they'll never be used again. And they were released as... Well, Road Rocket actually got his original name back. He was Road Rocket in Generation 2 and in the Robot Masters line in Japan in 2004. He was released again as Road Rocket in yellow. Somewhat similar to the Walmart release, but if you really look at them next to each other, Walmart Sideways and Road Rocket from Japan two years later are quite, quite different. They're both yellow. The comparison kind of stops there. This one was released as Double Face. Now, the interesting thing about Double Face is that this is a reference to the Transformers Armada action figure, which was named Double Face in Japan, but he was known as Sideways in the United States. So, in my opinion, it's, it's kind of interesting that uh, you have Sideways in 2002 it, as a Walmart exclusive, and then you have what is essentially the Japanese version of Sideways released in 2004. And so you get both bikes kind of as a similar character or a similar character family, maybe I should call it. Uh, Sideways is definitely one of my favorite characters from the Unicron Trilogy. The bike that he was in the original Unicron Trilogy was these colors. And it was really cool because he did have his own head, but then he came with a rider that would split apart into two halves, and each half of the, the rider figure could become its own new head. So there... I, don't, I guess really he should have been triple face instead of double face, but he was double face in Japan and he had three different ways that you could have his head. Armada Sideways was redecoed in 2004 as Rapid Run, who was yellow and black. The colors are not entirely the same and so it's probably a coincidence, but I like that there's then a similarity to the yellow and black Walmart Sideways from two years prior in 2002. I guess I should mention that back in Generation 2, there was also a plan to re-release the what would have been the original set of redecos for these, which would have been released as the familiar characters of Jazz and Soundwave. Those didn't get released, but they've been pictured several times in several different places. As far as compatibility with 118th lines, I've shown you, you know, by now some pictures in here and Whenever they changed these for the Microman line and then re-released them as additional toys, they actually didn't uh, change the handlebars back. So if you're interested in getting a set of them that are compatible with 118th figures, really the only ones that aren't going to be too compatible are the original Generation 2 releases. I mean, they are, but holding on to the handlebars works actually a lot, lot easier with the later figures. Sometimes I don't fully appreciate a figure until I get it out of the package, and sometimes there's just details that I read about online that I don't quite get exactly the reason for them. And in this case, the thing that I'd read is that while the weapons were retold for the Microman releases, so that the Microman figures could actually hold the laser portion of the laser cycles, 
that didn't carry forward, and I didn't quite understand why that was the case, but now that I've gotten them out of the package, I totally get it. For the Road Pig mold, it actually wasn't retooled for a figure to hold it. The instructions actually show that you're supposed to hold the Microman figure behind the laser exhaust in order to just light it up from behind. And for Road Rocket, uh, the reason why it, the, that extra post was no longer included is because the post actually occupies the exact same space as the LED. So since they were going to include those electronics, they couldn't continue to include that post. I, I guess the last thing that I wanted to mention is that uh, while I was digging through my collection to find these, I found I found something that I didn't even remember buying, and that is a set of bootlegs of the Transformers Robot Masters. Like I have both of them bootlegged. And the bootlegs are a little weird because, well, bootlegs are always weird. I, I guess maybe the weird thing about these bootlegs is the fact that they are so similar to the actually released figures. I don't know if these were made by Polyfect or whatever, what other company released them, because I think that I ended up getting them loose. I don't remember buying them, and I don't have the accessory for Road Rocket. Well, they don't have electronics, and that is somewhat similar to the Microman releases, but I would not say that they're bootlegged from the Microman releases, because I'm just kind of noticing now that this Microman one, while it doesn't have the wiring, it does have the battery compartment is still there, whereas these bootlegs don't even have a battery compartment that has been entirely removed. So just kind of, I guess if you're buying them loose for the Robot Masters, just kind of be careful. Probably the easy tell, the very, very easy tell, is the Robot Masters actually have the faction symbols on them, whereas these bootlegs, they do not. So that kind of does it. Uh, let us know what you think. I definitely think that these make great companion pieces to a 118th toy line, G.I. Joe, most likely, uh, even if you don't collect Transformers. So uh, take a look at them and uh, let us know what you think. Thanks a lot. Thanks for watching this episode of Articulated Points. We hope you enjoyed it. And we'd appreciate it if you would like, share, and subscribe. If you'd like to learn more about some of the toys featured in this episode or want to follow us on social media, links are in the description below this video.